Hey everybody, my name is Liz. I'm a farmer and I help Sarah manage some of our grants here in the North Central region. And one question we get a lot as people are working on their SARE grant applications, their proposals is, what exactly do I need to put in the outreach section and, and how much detail do you need? First of all, just to clarify that outreach is critical to every SARE project. The whole idea here is that you're getting federal dollars to support the project, but it's not just about benefiting your farm or ranch or community effort. It's about benefiting the whole of American agriculture. So we want you to share out what you learn as you go and, and definitely at the end. You'll do that partially through reporting um, with our grants database, but also through whatever activities you think are best for your community. So you can decide if you want to do field days or workshops, if you want to have farm tours, if you want to put together a video or written manual for how to do whatever it is you're figuring out how to do. The possibilities are really endless with outreach. We're going to go over a couple of tips for how to make a strong outreach section. First, let's talk about farmer rancher grants, because going through an example of an outreach plan that's in the call for proposals will actually let us see some tips that apply to all of our grants. It shows the date of the activity, what they're going to do, and who they want to participate. So for that top line between May and August, the team here is going to document the progress of their research trials with weekly photos and social media posts. Um, and in terms of who participates, they, they're talking about who's going to actually take the photos and make the posts. Um, how many people it will probably reach with their current Facebook followers, and also who they're going to get to share those posts and try to get the posts out to a wider audience. And then they go on to other examples, a conference they're wanting to present at, as well as field days on some of the farms involved in their work. And they've got the details for how many people they expect for each farm and for each conference presentation. For graduate student partnership, and research and education grants, you're sharing out with those who can put what you learned to work. So for instance, if you did on-farm applied research, you're going to share that with the end users, probably farmers. If you led an innovative education project, your outreach is in addition to the education work itself. You might focus your outreach on other agriculture professionals, for instance, folks who can utilize the resources or curriculum that you developed so that your work ripples out to reach more farmers. Now let's look at youth educator projects. When educators share what worked in their own classrooms or camps or other settings, it can really ripple out through the youth educator community. Um, and we know that when you share what curriculum worked or what, your, what approaches were effective with your students, it can make other educators feel more equipped. In your SARE proposal, you're gonna answer two questions about this. First, just a multiple choice question, which method will you use to share with other educators? And then we're going to ask you to tell us more about your outreach to other educators and how it will work. And you've got 300 words there, so you can tell us a little bit about if there will be a hands-on component, if you're going to be working through an example uh, lesson plan, or how you're going to structure your outreach to your fellow educators. Mm -hmm.